What links this graveyard to famous architects, famous murders and Robinson Crusoe? Find out now on this episode of Astonishing Glasgow. This is Cathcart Old Parish Church. It's been a few videos since I was wandering around the graveyard, so to avoid withdrawal symptoms, I've picked here for episode 42. It's also very close to my home, as I grew up in Cathcart and I can see this graveyard from my living room window. Now this is the old Cathcart Old Parish Churchyard, not to be confused with the new Cathcart Old Parish Church, which is just up the road and definitely not to be confused for New Cathcart Church, which is on the other side of Cathcart. They love their churches round here. Before we go into the churchyard, it is important to know that it is kept locked. You can get the key for the gate by arrangement with the new old parish church. Let's not start that conversation again. But I'm making this video on the spur of the moment, so I'm just jumping the wall. It's also important to note that there are no paths inside, so if you struggle with mobility, you may find it difficult to explore this graveyard. There's been a church on this site since 1707, but the tower that stands is from a later church built in 1831. The main church building was demolished in 1931 when the congregation moved to the new old parish church over the road. Once you're inside the walls, you will find gravestones dating back as far as the 18th century and as recent as Commonwealth War Grave of D. Arthur, a private in the Argyll and Southern Highlanders who died in action in 1916 aged 21. The oldest graves in the yard are next to the tower. Dating from the 1700s, they are sometimes hard to make out the writing, but the carved skulls are pretty interesting. And sometimes, what's on the back even more so. This recumbent stone I found particularly interesting. No writing on it whatsoever, just a sword carved along its side. And on this one, is that E.T.? So what are the astonishing links? Before we get started, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And when we get to the end of this video, check out the other videos on my channel for more tales of astonishing Glasgow. In the graveyard, the first of the mausoleums we're going to look at is this one. This is the mausoleum of Thomas Brown of Langside. But what makes this one so important? It has never been confirmed, but circumstantial evidence supports the possibility that this mausoleum was designed by renowned architect Robert Adam. Robert Adam was born in 1728. His dad was William Adam, who was at the time of Robert's birth Scotland's foremost architect so it's no real surprise that Robert followed in his footsteps. After spending five years in Rome, Robert returned to Britain and developed the Adam style of architecture based on his studies of antiquity. From his practice in London, he led the first phase of the classical revival in England and Scotland until his death in 1792. So how did this mausoleum in Cathcart become linked to such a prestigious architect who is better known for designing Whitehall in London, Pulteney Bridge in Bath, and closer to home, the Glasgow Royal Infirmary and the Assembly Halls. Now the Assembly Halls you'll know of if you've watched episode 17, as the arch now exists as the McClellan Arch in Glasgow Green. I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one. So Thomas Brown had employed Robert Adam to design Langside House in 1777, just five years before Brown's death. And with its neoclassical design and detail, the evidence ties it solidly to the work of Robert Adam. 
It's still a maybe, but it's almost a definite maybe. So from a maybe Robert Adam mausoleum to a definite Alexander Greek Thompson mausoleum. This Egypto-Greek domed cylinder, I copied that from Canmore, is the last resting place of John McIntyre, who died in 1872. John McIntyre worked with William Stevenson and Alexander Thompson in developing 1-10 to Moray Place in Strathbungo. I think this street would win the most picturesque chimney pots in Glasgow if such an award actually existed. When John McIntyre died, he was buried here in this mausoleum that Alexander Greek Thompson had designed for John's son in 1876. It's fair to say that Alexander Greek Thompson could be considered as Glasgow's second most famous architect, who as well as Maury Place and many other of Glasgow's finest buildings is known for designing Homewood House, which is only around a mile from this graveyard and now a National Trust property that's well worth a visit. I'll make a full video about Alexander Greek Thompson at some point, but he built Homewood House for the local entrepreneur and philanthropist Robert Cooper. Robert Cooper made his fortune through his mills, one of which stood through these gates, and on his death in 1887, he left £8,000 for the building of community halls and a library to be built in Cathcart and named the Cooper Institute. And that brings this video full circle, as in the corner of the old Cathcart Parish Church graveyard is Robert Cooper's grave in his family plot. Now this video is not over yet, so I hope you're all still with me. Not far from the Cooper family grave is this very distinctive iron cage mausoleum. This structure contains the burial plot of Neil Thompson Esquire. Neil was born to a family of cotton good manufacturers and when his brothers died, he became the sole owner of the family business. He owned the lands of Camp Hill, which was, in 1798, a secluded country district between the city of Glasgow and the small village of Langside. But as the city grew, and the terraces and tenements began to encroach on the area, he set aside land to become a park, which was at that point known as the South Park. I'm going down the South Park, gonna... Not that South Park. That parkland still exists today. Now known as Queen's Park, it is an incredibly important asset for this part of the city. Known for the care of his workers, Neil Thompson used his money to promote education and to encourage them to save for the future. He introduced shorter working hours and established a bakery in Cross Maloof to provide good quality bread far cheaper than what was normally the case. At the time when bread was poor quality and expensive, Long queues would form outside his shop in Crown Street, with demand often outstripping supply. The last grave to visit on this marathon is possibly what this churchyard is most famous for, and quite possibly the most requested subject for me to cover on Astonishing Glasgow. We're not unfamiliar with martyrs and weavers on this channel, and this is another monument for those who died for their beliefs. Now, this story is quite complex and possibly beyond my ability to accurately tell, so please forgive me if I've got it completely wrong. But in the 1600s, the Covenanters were members of the Presbyterian Church of Scotland. The origins of the movement lay when King James VI of Scotland became King James I of England and tried to unite the kingdoms. At the time, Scotland was governed by the Church, where England was governed by Parliament, and when Scotland supported James's son, Charles I, in the Second English Civil War of 1648, they'd backed the wrong side. Charles I was executed in 1649. His son, Charles II, was crowned King of Scotland in 1651, and signed a treaty to guarantee the rights of Scottish Presbyterianism. But when Oliver Cromwell took power in England in 1650, Scotland's legislative power was dissolved. 
When Charles II returned to the English throne in 1660, he failed to recognise the treaty, and this was seen as a massive betrayal by the Covenanters. The resulting disappointment led to civil unrest, and the Covenanters who refused to support the king became a persecuted minority. And that brings us to the events of 1685 and the men buried in this grave. Today, Pomedy has been swallowed completely by the city of Glasgow. If it wasn't for the fire station, car boot sale, motorway junction and recycling plant, its name may have completely vanished. But in the 1600s, it was a village formed around a burn that flowed into the Clyde and had a community of weavers. In May 1689, Major Balfour, accompanied by Captain Maitland and a party of soldiers, arrived in the small hamlet looking for Covenanters. Robert Tom, Thomas Cook and John Urie were apprehended and dragged from their looms. As soon as they had been taken, they were shot and killed with no mercy. The remains buried right here in the old Cathcart Parish churchyard, around half a mile away. In 1707, Daniel Defoe, the author of Robinson Crusoe, wrote about the events of that day, claiming his source as Captain Maitland. Maitland is described as a compassionate gentleman who was forced against his will to be present at the village and ordered to take part in the murder. The plot in the graveyard was unmarked until 1714, when this gravestone was erected. Moss and erosion has made the stone difficult to read, but this brass plaque translates what is written. Another sad tale from Glasgow's past. I hope you've enjoyed this visit to Cathcart Old Parish Churchyard, and if you did, please hit that like and subscribe button. If you want to make a donation to help me make more episodes, then hit that super thanks button and remember to check out my channel for other episodes. Thank you very much for watching and see you all next time in Astonishing Glasgow. Remember to get in touch through the comments section or via the social media feeds. I'm away for a pound of white chocolate skulls for Sam's Cafe on Gary Street. I'll see you next time. Bye now.